So ConvertKit is a popular email platform for developers. In this video, we're going to learn how to subscribe a user to a form on ConvertKit within an application. And to demonstrate this, we're going to be using Nux3 and we'll be leveraging server routes. Now, when implementing any feature into an application, I prefer to diagram it out to understand the flow. And to do this, I've been using Eraser.io, which is a really handy tool for creating diagrams. So what I have here is a diagram of the flow for what we're going to be doing in this video. Within this application, we'll have a form the user will input their email into. Once they input that, they can submit their email to subscribe to the form. The first thing we'll want to do is ensure that the email is valid. If it's not valid, we'll catch that and we'll display that to the user and they can update and resubmit the form. If the email is valid, we'll invoke a server route that we'll be creating to subscribe the user to that form. If we encounter a network error or perhaps the user is already subscribed, again we can catch that and display that message back to the user. And if the request is successful, then we can just display a success message. Now, although this is a pretty simple diagram for this particular feature, getting in the habit of doing this will allow you to think of things you might commonly overlook. And this is something that I've been doing more often when implementing features or when starting a new application. All right, to get started, I went ahead and created a brand new Nux3 project and took care of the entire front end so that way we can focus on the main objective, which is going to be integrating with ConvertKit. Now, if you do want to follow along with me from this exact starting point, I do have a link down below in the description to this GitHub repo. So with that being said, let's just quickly run through the starting point that we have. So within the markup, you're going to see a few components, and these are from the Nux UI library. And if you're building with Nux, I definitely can't recommend this library enough. So for this little application we're building, we're going to have a form in which the user can enter in their email. So we're going to take advantage of the uform component from the Nux UI library. So on this component, you'll notice a few things. We have this state prop, and then we also have the schema prop, and this is being bound to our form state and our form schema. So if we scroll up into our script, you can see those right here. We have the form state, which is just a reactive object, and the form schema is going to be how we're going to validate our form state, and you can see that's in the same format. And to do the validation, we're going to be using a library called Zod. And if you're unfamiliar with what Zod is, it's just a TypeScript for schema validation with static type interface, and it's very easy to integrate into Nux UI to perform form validation. And for the validation itself, we're just going to be checking to make sure it's a string, and then it's also in the email format. And if it's not in the email format, we'll just return a message that says invalid email. And back within the form, we're just going to have our form group, which is going to contain the input in which we'll have the user enter in their email. And then we just have a button below this with a type of submit. And whenever we click on this button of submit, it's going to fire the submit event on the form. And then we'll run this function we have right here called form submission. And here inside of our application, this is what our default form is going to look like. Now, if we attempt to join this form with no email, you'll see that we'll get this invalid email message appear beneath our input and everything is going to turn red. And that is because of the Zod validation that we have right here. So as you can see, if we don't have a valid email, we're going to get this message that says invalid email. But if we do attempt to enter a valid email, say we'll do my email like this. And then we tab out of there, you can see that it's going to validate that, and now we have a valid email. All right, so now that we've walked through the starting point for this video, we're going to head over to ConvertKit to start to set up the ability to add a subscriber from our next application to a form here on ConvertKit. So if you don't yet have an account, you'll want to create one. It is free to do. Now, once you have your account created and you're logged in, you're going to want to navigate up to your profile, and then we're going to select on Settings. And then from here, we have the Settings panel on the left. We're going to want to select on Advanced, and then we want to copy this API key. So we'll copy this. And then back here inside of our project, we'll just want to create an environment variable for our API key. So we can do that inside of a .env file. So if you don't have one created, you'll want to do so. And then within here, we'll just say convert underscore kit underscore key. And then we'll set this equal to the value that we copied from our settings. Now we're going to need to use this environment variables value in our server route to make our API request to ConvertKit. Now to use this within our server route, we're going to be taking advantage of the Nux runtime config, which is going to expose these configurations and secrets within our Nuxt application. 
Now to set this up, we're going to want to head over to our Nux config and within here we want to define what is called the runtime config property and this is going to be an object and we can define all of our runtime config variables within here. So for the sake of this video, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new value called convert kit key and then we're going to set this equal to process.env and then we have the name of our key which is called convert kit key which is what we define here inside of our environment variable file. And now that we have our API key, we're ready to begin working on our server route, which we're going to be using to make our request over to ConvertKit to add a user's email to a form. So here inside of our directory, we have the server folder. And within here, I already went ahead and created a folder called API. And I also created a file within here called subscription. And this is going to be our server route. And in this file, I already went ahead and created the define event handler, which is where we're going to write all the logic for this particular endpoint. So the first thing we want to do is obtain the body that is being sent along with this request. And to do this, we want to create a new variable and we'll just call this body. And then we're going to set this equal to the keyword of await. And then we're going to use the read body method. And then we're going to pass in the event that is available to us within this define event handler. And we'll also be needing our ConvertKit API key from the runtime config to use within this endpoint. So to obtain that, we can just create another variable and we'll just destructure this response. And then we'll set this equal to the use runtime config method like this. And then we just want to destructure the variable name that we passed within our Nux config files. So as you can see, the name we gave it was ConvertKit key. So we can just copy that and we can just paste it here inside of our destructured variable. And now we have access to this key here inside of our endpoint. Now, although we're going to be doing some validation on the client side to ensure we actually have an email before we call this endpoint, we're also going to want to do some validation here on the server side as well. So what we'll do is we'll have an if check. And then what we want to check for is to ensure within the body we have an email. So if we don't have an email within the body, then we want to throw an error. So how we throw an error within a server route is we can say throw, and then we can use the create error method. And then we can pass within here a status code property. And we'll set this to be 400. And then we'll also attach a status message. And this will say email address is required. Now, whenever you're writing code, it's always a good idea to test things as you go. So let's test out our current endpoint so far whenever we submit our form. So what we can do is we can use the fetch utility and then we can invoke our endpoint, our caller endpoint, which is going to be API slash subscription here. And then within here, we just want to pass along a few things. So we want to pass along the method, which is going to be a post request. And then we also want to send along inside of the body, the current email. So how we can get the email is we can say event dot data, and then we should be able to send the email and we need to define this as a property. So this will be email like that. And there we go. And then we also want to await this because eventually we will be calling some asynchronous uh, functionality in there. So we just want to make sure we don't forget that as well. Now here inside of our application, if we attempt to submit this form without an email, then our client side validation is going to catch that. However, if we then enter in an email and we click on join form, then you can see that our endpoint of subscription is going to be invoked. Now, if we wanted to test out the validation we had for not providing an email, instead of actually checking to not have an email, we can check to see if we have an email. So since we are sending one, we should see this get thrown an error of a 400 with this message here. So if we go back to our application, and we click on join form now, you can see that it's going to call a 400 error on this endpoint and you can see that we have the status code of 400 as well as our status message of email address is required. All right, so now that we know our endpoint is working, we can change back this validation to check for not having an email and then we can just do some spacing here as well. And then the next thing we're going to want to do is make a request over to ConvertKit to add that email to a form. So how we're going to do this is we'll head over to the ConvertKit documentation and I'll leave a link down below in the description to this. And then here we have a section for forms and then we want to select on add subscriber to a form. And then they provide us a example request as well as the required parameters. So the actual endpoint we'll want to hit is going to be this right here. So we can copy this. And then the required parameters we're going to need to send along with this is going to be the API key as well as the email. And if you wanted to, there are some optional parameters you can send along as well. But for the sake of this tutorial, we're just going to be sticking with the required ones. 
So back within our server route, we'll create a new variable to store the response from this API request. So we'll just call this res, and then we'll set this equal to await, and then we want to again use our fetch utility. And then within this, we're going to pass in that uh, URL that we copied over from ConvertKit. And as you can see, it's going to require a form ID, which we'll get around to finding that in a second. But for now, we'll just leave that as is. And then within this actual endpoint call, we want to pass again a few options. So this will be a post request. So we'll pass the method and we'll say post. And also for this request, we'll need to send along the body with those required parameters. So we have one called API underscore key. And this is going to be set equal to our convert kit key that we're getting from the Nux runtime configs. So we'll just paste that in here. And then we also want to provide the email, which is going to come from the body. And then we'll have the email property. Now, when we call this endpoint, we need to provide a form ID to subscribe this user to. So over on ConvertKit, what we want to do is head back over to the main site and we want to select on grow and we want to select landing pages and forms. And then we want to select on create new and then we'll select form. And it doesn't matter which type of format you choose for this. So we'll just select inline. And then again, the same thing for the template. We're not going to be using this. So we'll just choose the first one. And then what we need to do is just publish this and we can exit out of this. And we want to select this form ID that we have in the URL. And then back inside of our project, we just want to paste that form ID with where it says form ID. Now, when we make this request, we're going to get a response back from ConvertKit. And that response is going to look something like this. And within this subscription object that we get back from the response, we want to look at a property called state and the value of this property can either be an active or active. And this is going to indicate whether or not the user is already part of the form or not. And we're going to use this to let the user know if they already have subscribed to that particular form. So back over here in our server route, what we want to do is we want to check to see if that user is active. So we'll do an if check and then we'll say if the res dot subscription and then we have that property of state and then we want to see if this is equal to active. Now, if that user is active, all we want to do is return back a message and let them know that they're already subscribed. So we'll return back a message property. And then this will say you are already subscribed. So as you may be able to see, we do have a TypeScript error because the response that we're getting back from ConvertKit has a type of unknown. Now to resolve this, you could do one of two things. You could either create a type that is going to mock the response that we get, or you can do what I'm going to do and just use the type of any. Now, if the state property within the subscription object is not equal to active, that means we have a new user. And then all we want to do is just return back a success message. So we'll say return and then we'll have our message property. And then we'll just say, thanks for joining. Please check your email to confirm your subscription. All right, so the final thing that we want to do within our server route is handle any network errors that we might have. So for this, what we want to do is wrap all of our logic inside of a try catch block. So inside of the try block, we'll just uh, move all the logic we wrote so far into this. So we'll just take that and we'll move it up like that. And then after our try block, we're going to have our catch block and this will catch any errors that we may have. So we'll say catch and then we'll define this block and then we can just move our handle network errors comment into this. And then what we want to do is we just want to throw and then we'll use our create error method once again. And then I'll just paste in the object with our status code property, which is going to be 500. And then for the status message, we'll just have this say internal server error. Now that we have our server route completed, the last thing we want to do is provide messaging to the user whenever they attempt to sign up to the form. So first off, what we're going to do is we'll wrap all of our logic again inside of a try catch block. So we'll create our try block and then we'll push our function into this. And then again, we'll just have our catch block beneath this. Now to display the response as we get back from our server route, we're going to be using a toast notification. And Nux UI provides a very easy way to add toast notifications to our application. So the first thing we want to do inside of our script is we want to create a new variable and we're going to call this toast. And then we want to set it equal to the use toast composable that is provided to us by Nux UI. And then inside of our template, all we want to do is add the component called view notifications. And this will allow us to display those toast notifications here on our page. Now to reference the message that is getting returned to us from our server route, what we want to do is we want to store this inside of a variable. So we'll say const and then we'll do res again and then we'll set this equal to our fetch. And then to actually display a toast notification, what we want to do is reference our variable we have that we declared called toast. We'll say toast and then there's a method we can see called add 
And then within this, we just want to pass a object and we just want to pass a few properties. Now, since this is a successful message, we just want to pass the color of green, which will colorize the notification to be green. And then for the title, we'll just pass along the res.message that is being returned to us from our server route. And in the event that we have an error inside of our catch block, we can do something very similar. We can say toast and then we can do add once more. And then instead of passing the color of green and then the title from a res.message, we can pass the color of red for the indication of an error. And then for the title or the message, we're just going to reference the status message that is being returned from the server route as well. Now in the application, if we attempt to enter in our email and then we click on join form, we should see that we have our message being returned saying thanks for joining. Please check your email to confirm your subscription and we can see that the request was made successful here as well inside of our network tab. Now, once a user signs up to join the form, they're going to get an email saying thanks for signing up and they need to then confirm their subscription. Now, if the user does not confirm their subscription and they continue to try to join the form, they will get a thank you for joining message because until they actually confirm their email, they're considered inactive. So once you do confirm the email, though, however, so if we click on confirm subscription and then we head back over to the actual application and click on join form again, you can see that now we'll see that the user is already subscribed. Now, if you wanted to edit the content of the confirmation email that gets sent, what you want to do is head over to the form we created on ConvertKit, and then you want to select on Settings. And then within our form settings, we can select on Incentive. And then there's a button here to edit the email contents. And then you have this GUI in which you can edit the incentive email that gets sent to confirm the user subscription. And also within the form settings, you have the ability to auto-confirm new subscribers, which I don't recommend doing, and neither does ConvertKit. And you can also choose what happens after a user confirms their email. So you can either have them redirected to this default URL right here, or you could have them download something. All right, so that's going to wrap it up for this video. I know we skimmed over a majority of the front end UI implementation, so hopefully you didn't find that too confusing, as I just wanted to keep the main focus of this video on the integration of ConvertKit itself. But anyways, if you did enjoy the video and you found this helpful, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're new. Thank you for watching. Take care.